Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to create a wrapper node for the curve to mesh node. This node's going to give us extra inputs and outputs on our curve to mesh node that'll make it easier to use, and it'll give us access to things that we may want after we've created this node. For one, it'll give us a default profile curve of a curved circle, so we don't always have to add one if that's all we're going to add in the first place. It'll also give us access to the ring and the rail number of each point in our curve to mesh. And finally, it's going to give us UV coordinates that we can simply pipe into our node tree to set a nice UV map for the tube we've just created. But we'll get into all that in just a second. But for now, let's jump right in. So to start off with, we're going to go to our geometry nodes and add a node tree to this object. It really doesn't matter what this is because we're going to get rid of it anyway. Next, we'll want to add some kind of curve that we can add our curve to mesh to. So I'll just use a curve primitive spiral. And then we'll add our curve to mesh node. Since we want to wrap up this curve to mesh node and give additional features to it, we're going to go ahead right away and put it in a group. And then we'll name that group curve to mesh plus plus. The first thing I want to do is add a default profile curve in case I don't hook one up to the node group. So how do we do that? Inside the node group, let's disconnect the incoming profile curve to the curve to mesh profile curve. Now we only want to use the incoming profile curve if there's a profile curve there to use. We can figure out if there is one by using the domain size node. If we put it in curve mode, we can check the point count. And if our incoming curve has any points, we'll use it. So, if the incoming point count is not equal to zero, we want to add a switch node. So in the case when our incoming profile curve has more than zero points, we want this to be true. And that will be our profile curve. Now if the incoming profile curve has zero points, we want to have something by default. When I add a curve to mesh node, one of the first things I usually do is add a curve primitive circle. So I'm going to use that as my default. I'll turn down the radius and I'll leave my resolution at 32. Now I will want to be able to edit this default from outside of the node group. So I'll hook up the resolution and radius to my input. Under the input name, I'll change this to default resolution and default radius. So now if I go back to my main node group and add some and add a different profile curve, let's say a star, you'll see that that's now our profile curve. I can add a set shade smooth node so we can see what it's doing a little better. But if I disconnect this profile curve, I now get my default curve circle and I can change its default resolution and default radius from here. But let's keep going. One thing I've wanted out of a curve to mesh node quite often is to be able to select a certain ring or a certain rail of that tube that's created. The rail being the lines that go from one end to the other. I don't really have a good name for these, so I'm just calling them rails. So let's store an attribute that we can access on the output of our curve to mesh plus plus node that will have the index of the rail and ring that each point is on. Each ring of our tube is generated at one of the points of our original curve. So if we go to our original curve and create a capture attribute node, change its type to integer, and then capture the index of that point before we use the curve to mesh node, that index will be stored for each point. So all of the points on this ring will have zero, this one will have one, this one will have two, etc. Now we can drag this attribute to our output and we can call this ring index. In the same way, the points of our profile curve define the rails of our tube. So we can do the same process with our profile curve. And this will be our rail index. 
let's go back to our main node tree and preview what this does for us. So let's pull out the ring index and set it equal to zero. We'll control shift click on our curve to mesh node to get this geometry. And then we'll control shift click on our equals node. Here you can see we've selected ring zero. And now we can use this to select any ring of points on our tube. In a similar way, we can use the rail index to select one of the rails along our tube. We can add some other helper outputs here as well. We can take the point count of our profile curve and use that as a rail count. And we can do the same thing up here from our main curve and this will be our ring count. Another thing you might want to do is just select the end points or the start points. Now the start points are really just where the ring index is zero and then the end points will be where the ring index is equal to the last ring of our tube. However, we don't want to have to add this every time we use this node. So let's go ahead and just build that straight in. Let's capture another attribute on our main curve. And this one is going to be a Boolean. We'll add in a curve endpoint selection node and set it so we're just picking a start size of one. We'll take this value and plug it into our output. This will be our start ring. Later on, if we use the fill caps option, we can use this to get the start face of our object as well. Let's jump out and see how this looks. We'll control shift click on our curve to mesh plus plus node and then control shift click several times till we get down to the start ring. If we add in fill caps, we can see that that's selected. And if we put our viewer in face mode, you'll see that we've just selected the start face of this tube. Let's go back in and do the same thing for the end ring. We'll take these two nodes and duplicate them and just pull them back a little. Our start size will be zero and our end size will be one. And then we'll connect this to the output as well. And this will be our end ring. Now a standard way that you might want to set UV maps on a tube like this is to have the seams of your UV unwrap be on the end faces of your tube and then choosing one rail on the tube as a seam. So let's go ahead and make a default UV output for our curve to mesh node here. So we'll want these seams to be our start ring, our end ring, and then one rail. So we'll want to select our start ring, add an OR node, or our end ring, and then we'll want where our rail index is equal to some number. We'll want to OR this together as well. As a quick aside, Chaining a bunch of ores together like this can get confusing quickly. So I have, on my Gumroad, a package of nodes called my Multiplex nodes. One of those nodes is an ore Multiplex node. What I'll do here is I'll delete these. And then I'll add in my Multiplex ore node. This lets me hook up up to six Boolean inputs and ore them all together. So this will be the selection for the seams of my UV unwrap. Here I'll add my UV unwrap node with this as the seams. I'll add a pack UV islands node and then I'll output this UV. Now depending on what you're doing, you might not always want rail zero. So let's add our group input here and connect up a new input. We'll call this the UV rail. If you want to bring in the margin for the UV unwrap, 
or the margin for the pack UV islands, you can of course bring those out to your group input as well. Those aren't as important for me at the moment, so I'm not connecting those up. Just to keep this clean. Now there have been some improve now there have been some improvements with the way UVs work in geometry nodes in Blender 3.5 Alpha, which is going to become Blender 3.5 Beta very soon. So while I've noticed there are some problems applying this UV map in Blender 3.4.1, it does apply very cleanly in Blender 3.5. Let me give you an example. So first, I'm going to add a material to our object. I'll go into my shading screen, select my principled BSDF, and because I have Node Wrangler installed, I can press Control Shift T and I can choose a texture. Now here in Blender 3.4.1, we can't write to UV maps directly, so we have to use an attribute to do it. So we'll add an input attribute node, take this vector and replace our UV map with it. And then we'll need a name. I'll call it texture. Back in my geometry node tree, I'll add a set material node and choose that material. Of course, it hasn't been applied correctly yet because we haven't hooked up the UVs. We'll take our UVs and pull them over to our output. Nothing happens yet because here we need to name this output to the same name we gave it in the shader. Now you will notice at the end here, you've got some problems with the way this is being applied. That's because our output for UVs is set to an attribute domain of point and we need this to be face corner for UVs. Now we may want to adjust the way our UV map is being placed. So I can use vector math nodes to adjust it. Here I'll set it to scale and change my scale a little bit. I can also use a multiply node going side to side to change just one aspect, a resample curve node to my spiral. This will distribute the points on my spiral more evenly. So you can see I'm getting a pretty good result. Let's take this over to Blender 3.5 Beta to see how we'll use the UVs in the new upcoming version. So here we are in Blender 3.5 Alpha. Let's see how we'll set up these UVs. I'll add a material to the object, go under shading, add a texture, and the one thing I've noticed so far, and I don't know if this will get corrected before the release, is that instead of using the standard UV input here, we do need to use a UV map node and select the UV map we want to use. We'll go back to geometry nodes, add our set material node, and choose the material, and then add a store named attribute node, and this is going to be the attribute that's our UV map. So I'll change this type to 2D vector because that's what UVs are. I'll connect this store named attribute node into the chain here, connect up my UV, and then I'll give this the name of my UV map. And we want to set this to face corner. And now we have a very nicely unwrapped tube. And being able to write directly to the UV maps is going to be a great benefit in the upcoming version of Blender. The only thing left to do here is to mark this as an asset and then save this into one of my asset libraries. And then the next time I go to add a curve to mesh node, simply search curve to mesh. And instead of choosing the regular one, choose curve to mesh plus plus and I'll get all of these extra options for free. Anyhow, I know this one wasn't too complicated, but I do feel that having some utility nodes that make life a little easier is pretty helpful. If you're interested in the project file for this video, it'll be available via my Patreon. The link's down in the description. Of course, I do want to give a shout out to all those awesome patrons who are supporting me. You all are pretty great. So I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.